all welcome to the security tube ios security expert course and certification so in this video we will start looking more into the iphone data protection tools now as i mentioned uh, previously uh, that these data protection tool suite from sogeti labs is open source freely downloadable and typically works predictably with A4 devices having an existing boot ROM exploit like Limerin. Now, what I'm going to do is go through the entire process of setting up the iPhone data protection tools. Now, the key file is if you go inside wiki, you have readme and here they've detailed out the whole process. I mean, to an extent where it's actually cut paste, right? Uh, I'm really going to feel stupid, but uh, kind of doing the whole cut paste, but that is all that is required here, right? So here is what installing the dependencies. Now, the important thing is to go ahead and create the whole environment for the iPhone data protection tool. You require a Mac. Uh, to be honest, when you go into something as in depth as forensics, you probably already have a machine with you, right? If you don't, you could still go ahead and uh, try with, you know, one of the sample RAM disks I have enclosed along with this module, which is for uh, A4 devices, and you can use that. But I would strongly recommend getting a Mac if you're doing forensics for a living. Okay, so I already have Eldit, which I have gone ahead and installed, and it's there in user bin. Let me go to my terminal here. And a lot of these commands are just going to say it's already done, but uh, the reason is I've already tried them out. So for example, this says file exists, that's okay. I'm just kind of doing it so you know this is the uh, exact process of doing it. Okay, I'm going to get OSX fuse for the image 3 file system. And while that is downloading, let's also get the next command basically installing OS X fuse. Now, what are we really doing? We are downloading all utilities and everything required to create our own custom RAM disk on which we are going to load the iPhone data protection tools, right? Uh, and then this will allow us to do a lot of interesting things which you'll see shortly. Now, some of the tools are going to be on your local computer uh, while others would basically exist on the remote computer, which is your iPhone. Okay. Here it goes. It's installing. And now let's install some of the other dependencies such as setup tools, progress bars, and all of that, most of which already installed. And while that happens, in the end, let's set up the ARC flags. Okay, here we go, done. Now is where we are going to build our custom RAM disk and kernel. So we're going to use Mercury to go ahead and first clone the iPhone data protection tools. This will take a bit. Then go and cite the directory. Fantastic. Now you may see a bunch of warning messages. No need to worry, everything is just working fine. And now uh, we need to install Red Snow. I think at the time of writing they had 0912B2. I already have Red Snow uh, B3 installed. So let me kind of do a quick drag and drop from the previous directory to this one. And then we can just unzip it. 
and what we need to do is copy the keys.plist to the current directory from inside the red snow directory right and this is going to be inside the app directory mac os and if you notice there is a keys.plist which we copy to the current directory fantastic now we require the image for one hour devices right the ipsw file now the thing which you need to notice if you remember we are running ios 601 uh, however what we are going to use is 511 and because of the bootrom exploit it's possible to use that so let me go ahead and copy that image i've already downloaded it in your case you would have to download it let me go ahead and move it to this directory the 511 image fantastic and now i'm going to go ahead and use the kernel patcher so that it patches our image this is part of the tool set there you go this takes a bit and if you notice all patches have been applied and it says created the make ram disk file this is what we have here and then we need to run this right so we have oops and then let's run the make ram disk now again you may see a lot of warning messages etc there is no need to panic it's just going to work fine now the next step uh, after the RAM disk has been created, right? So now SSH and all of this is being downloaded, which will be utilized on the phone to run an SSH server. Fantastic, right? So it actually tells you right now that whatever you require has been created. So that is basically my RAM disk which has been created right 16 MB and the kernel cache file it's 11 MB and now what we want to do really is boot our phone using this right so we need to boot red snow along with this now to do that we need to go into the red snow directory the red snow app one os red snow and then you have rest of the command line arguments which we'll paste down here and now I already have my phone connected right for the first demo we'll use an unlocked phone and for the next video we use a locked one so let me go ahead and run this and if you notice red snow launches down below and in just a second it should tell me basically that I have an iPhone 601 iOS connected let me go ahead switch off my phone and now I'm going to boot my phone and put it in DFU mode and this is exactly like the way uh, we were working when we jailbroke the phone right the key difference here really is that now we are booting our own custom RAM disk okay so let's go for it so I'm now setting it into DFU mode uh, I'm about to release the power button here it goes home is still pressed and there you go 
Now, the key difference again is we are booting our own RAM disk, which is fantastic, right? It's almost like you've created a little live CD for your phone. So uploading second stage, waiting for reboot. And my phone is rebooting at this point. If you notice, it's a little pineapple and it says the rest of the process will happen on the phone, right? Now, interesting. And if you look at it, my phone is booting. This is what you would probably see on your phone. Do you see that big OK there? It's kind of mentioned. Awesome, right? And in the end, it basically says NAND dumper listening on port 2000. Fantastic. Everything is set up and it's working fine. Now, what we would need to do is set up a TCP relay, just like what we did with USB MUXT, if you remember, right? So, let me take this. And what I'm going to do is, let me go ahead and open up a new terminal. And let me paste this one in. Awesome, done that. Now let's go back here. And as I said, you know, this is pretty much point and click. Okay, we don't need to brute force the pin code simply because it's not pin protected in any way. Uh, but there are a couple of interesting things which you can actually do. First of which is actually SSHing into the phone, just like what we did in the previous video. and the password remains alpine there you go right and if you notice we have mnt1 and mnt2 right kind of mount partitions and if you notice right now both the partitions have been mounted and this is exactly what we did in the previous video. The only good news was most of the stuff had happened uh, very simply, just point and click the jar file. It would do everything which we did right now, which is create the IPSW patch it, boot the own RAM disk, right? And come back and show us all of these interesting little things. Now, uh, pretty much we are back to the previous case, which is we can, we can do what we want, right? We can go to the keychain directory. Uh, copy the keychain out, right? You have keychain 2.db, and then we can bring it locally, open it up, and everything. Simply because there is no passcode attached right now, uh, most of the data pretty much remains unprotected, right? Awesome. Now, there are other things which you can do as well. One of them is to go ahead and create a disk for the entire directory right using the dump partition command and this would go ahead and basically create full disk uh, image of the phone for us here locally right let's and it really is going to take you a very long time before all of this goes through And what it does, it's going to create a new directory inside which it's going to put this image in. So if I were to open a new window, change directory, go inside downloads iOS challenges forensics 
and iPhone data protection. Then go inside this directory. Fine. Right. This is what is being created at this point. And if you notice, the image size is slowly increasing. It's 588 MB just a couple of seconds back. It's 605 MB right now. Uh, and depending on the size, you know, of your partitions, it just is probably going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it run. There's no real need to go ahead and, you know, uh, wait for it at this point. And the best part is that once this image is created, you can pretty much mount it like any other disk and all your iOS, uh, you know, directories, file system, everything is pretty much accessible to you, right? Fantastic. So let me go ahead, stop the video here. And we look at the iOS file system and all of that in a later video in this module but to show you what are the interesting things we can discover, right? Okay, fantastic. Thanks a lot for the video. Bye-bye.